This is the greatest show! Welcome back to the Sweet Film Awards! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Sweet Film Awards! A movie award show made by movie lovers for movie lovers. And now, finally, here are your hosts, Cody Curtis and Zach Pope. Take it away, boys! Welcome back, everyone, to the Sweet Film Awards Part 2! Yes, if you guys already missed it, part one's over on Cody Curtis's channel. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can go check out that part and then come over to my part two because today we are finishing up the Sweet Film Awards, the first ever actually. We've already had some fantastic awards being passed out. We've had impactful film being given out. We've had some breakthrough performances being awarded. We've even been given our best director. And of course, we've also had other great YouTubers already join us. And of course, this is just a ton of fun. But Cody... Please reintroduce yourself before we get into the first award. Yep, everybody, I'm here with my buddy, Zach Pope. My name is Cody Curtis. I'm excited because we had a lot of great YouTubers and a lot of great friends in the last part of the Sweet Film Awards. Go check that out if you missed it. But now we got even more content headed your way. We got the bigger categories headed to you right now. And Zach, let's get this party started right away. Yes, Cody, you are right. Let's get into our first category coming up, and that is going to be Most Surprising Film This Year. Now, this award is pretty pretty much handing out to the movie that surprised us. What movie was actually good this year that no one thought it was going to be? And we have a great person that's going to be giving this award out, and that is the Mr. J. Motherfucking Vaders. This is J. Vaders in the house. Yes, thank you guys for having me on this award ceremony. I am so freaking happy to be here. I am Jay Vaders on Jay Vaders on YouTube. I do a lot of top tens, movie reviews, and rankings, and I am so pleased to be on this award show, and I'm so pleased and so freaking happy to present the award for Best Movie of the Year. There were so many amazing films, so many great choices to choose from, and what? What? Uh, oh, sorry. My apologies. Apparently, I'm not presenting the award for Best Movie of the Year. I'm doing, uh, what am I doing again? Oh, Biggest Surprise. Biggest Surprise Movie of the Entire Year. This movie, this, this is a year full of big surprises in cinema, and these five films are certainly surprising. Yeah, can't make this shit up. Anyways, and the nominees are Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, Get Out, Split, Girls Trip, and American Made. And the winner is... <laughs> Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Congratulations, congratulations, Jumanji. You're a sequel that no one expected to be good, but you ended up being a critical success, a financial success, and of course, the biggest surprise of 2017. So yeah, congratulations, Jumanji. And of course, thank you, Zach and Cody, for having me on the show. Hashtag that evolution. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Thank you so much for presenting that, Jay. Man, I love your channel. You are such a hilarious guy. You actually gave us our award for Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Yes, this is actually the biggest surprise of the film because I, looking at the trailers, I was like, this film is probably going to be shit. And it didn't. It turned out to be really fun. A lot of fun. I mean, the other films on this list, I mean, Get Out, the trailers weren't that good. Girl's Trip was another big surprise for me. That probably was the biggest surprise for me over this whole year. Split was another great surprise. And even American Made. Who knew American Made would be that well done? But yeah, Jumanji came out on top. And Jay, again, thank you so much for being here. Yep, Jay Vaders, thank you so much for presenting this award. And congratulations to Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. You did exactly what a sequel should do. It's a sequel that people weren't really expecting a sequel that nobody really cared about but it landed in the theaters and it's one of the best experiences everybody pretty much unanimously agrees that they had inside the movie theater great performances great action great humor just an overall great movie experience to make you get away from the world so congratulations jumanji for winning the biggest surprise sweet film award of 2018 but now we move on to the opposite of that, and that would be the biggest dumpster fire of the year. These are the films that pretty much, they're the worst movies that have come out of the year. The movies that have scarred people for life, and not in that good horror movie kind of sense. The movies that people feel are so bad, they need to be thrown inside of a dumpster can, and lit on fire with a bunch of gasoline, and nobody should remember them. And to 
turn this over. Our presenter for this is Mr. Justin Watches Movies. Justin, what do you have to say? Hello everybody, my name is Justin Watches Movies and I'm here to present to you guys the worst film of 2017. Or as us movie fans like to call the biggest dumpster fire, the worst film of the year, the biggest piece of crap there is. There are five nominations for the worst film of the year. And the nominations for the worst film of the year, this is, you don't want to ever be in this list. You don't want to be here at the end of the year. When you make a movie, you want it to be better. But the nominations are Resident Evil, The Final Chapter, Fifty Shades Darker, The Moji Movie, The Snowman, and Transformers, The Last Night. And the winner, I, w I wouldn't consider it a winner, but the worst film in 2017 belongs to, drum roll please, The Emoji Movie. The Emoji Movie is the worst film in my eyes and a lot of people's eyes. It is the worst film of 2017. Thank you guys for having me on this movie award show. I appreciate the consideration, even though you guys left me with the worst category to talk about, the worst films. I still do appreciate it. The Emoji Movie. The movie that many people consider to be the worst film that has come out in recent memory, the worst movie that come out in the past few years, because it's a film that not only takes your kids and tries to entertain them, but it's a film that takes your kids, tries to entertain them, and actually ends up making them more stupid. And if you ask me, my pick for the worst film was The Snowman, but I can happily give this award to the Emoji Movie because in my opinion, although I hated the snowman more, I think the Emoji Movie is the worst film to come out of this decade. It is so horrible. The Emoji Movie is trash and guess what Emoji Movie? You are the biggest dumpster fire of 2017. Thank God we're done with those films. Thank God. But thank you Justin for giving us and presenting the worst or dumpster fire movie of this year. The Emoji Movie deserves it. I walked out of this film. I never even finished it. I don't give a shit to ever finish this film because it was absolutely trash. The Snowman was trash. Fifty Shades Darker was even more trash. And Transformers The Last Night, with some stupid humor in there, was also garbage. So let's forget all about these other films. So let's move into our next category now, and that is Best Score. Now this is... Per now, this is presented by my good friend, Adam, from Almost Sideways, and there was a lot of great scores this year, so Adam, you take it away, buddy. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Adam from Almost Sideways, and it's an honor to be presenting at the Sweet Film Awards, and I'm going to be presenting the Best Original Score. Uh, this is an awesome category with five amazing sports teams, and a lot of awesome scores and runs they have gave, given us this year. We saw the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl score a bunch of points against the Patriots. We saw the Houston Astros score a bunch of runs in the World Series this year as well. The producer's looking at me real fast. What? Huh? Wait, so it's not about sports? Well, that's a twist I didn't see coming. All right, I guess this is about movies. I guess I should stick to the teleprompter here and just read what that says. All right, guys, and all, and all, all joking aside, we have five amazing film scores that it's been awesome to hear these things. And with scores in movies, they help elevate what we're seeing on screen. So with, with great score comes even better moments to relive. So the nominees for Best Original Score... And the nominees are Blade Runner 2049, Coco, The Shape of Water, War for the Planet of the Apes, and Wonder Woman. And the winner of the 2018 Sweet Film Awards for Best Original Score goes to The Shape of Water. Congratulations, that score is fantastic. So the Shape of Water pulls out the victory, and this was a really hard-fought match. Congratulations, Shape of Water. 
Go take it home at the Oscars as well. Until next time, guys, my name is Adam Volmos Sideways, and I cannot wait to see what the other winners are. See you guys. Shape of Water won, and I'm so excited for this. That score is my favorite score, and this would be my personal choice. The Shape of Water score is so whimsical and fantastical throughout the whole film, and it just works perfectly. Adam, thank you so much for giving us your video and your thoughts on what won, and it I man, thank you so much for presenting. It, it means a lot to us. But guys, I'm so happy that Shape of Water won. Easily any of these other films could have won. I mean, Blade Runner was a big contention for me as well. But Shape of Water, in the end of the day, is one of the most memorable scores I think I've ever heard in my whole life. Shape of Water doesn't just have one of the most memorable scores. It's one of the most memorable movies of this year. Guillermo del Toro is a great storyteller. A great storyteller of fairy tales and through this score you can see his influence of foreign films of french films of of music of musicals all the stuff that music has influenced over the years when it comes to cinema all right guys we've talked about scores in part one we talked about the best hero of the year but with every hero there has to be a flip to that coin we need to talk about the best villain of 2017 and to present that is Mr. Griffin from Men vs. Movies who I might add knows a thing or two when it comes to both heroes and villains. So Griffin, tell us who the best villain is. How's it going everyone? It's Griffin here from Men vs. Movies getting ready to give you the winner for the Best Villain Award. Thank you Zach and Cody for having me on this sweet award show. And while there's been a lot of great villains this year, I can honestly say there's only one clear winner that comes to mind. Let's see if it ends up being him. If you guys are interested, definitely head over to Men vs. Movies. Check us out. We do movie reviews. We got a James Bond podcast. Do some editorial style videos. And we're currently doing this thing called Oscar Month where we talk about all things Academy Awards for the month of February. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely go check it out. We're doing it in collaboration with Tyler Tompkins who is also featured on this video. All right, let's get down to brass tacks here because that's what you came here for and that's what you want to know. So the nominees for Best Best villain in a film in 2017 are Pennywise, the Colonel from War for the Planet of the Apes, Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming, Kylo Ren, and the Armitage family from Get Out. And the winner of the award is Danny Elfman from Justice League. Oh my god, I... Guys, mind blown, coming in with an, a, a massive upset here. We've got Danny Elfman, who literally single-handedly ruined the score for Justice League. I couldn't think of a better winner for this award. Well done. This is just phenomenal. What? He wasn't the, even nominated. He wasn't even nominated? What? You idiot. No, no, it literally, it's, it's literally Danny Elfman. You idiot. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Uh, really? Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. It appears that Danny Elfman wasn't even nominated. Who would have thought? Well, I guess out of the nominees here, the winner is... The Armitage Family from Get Out! Coming in there with a massive upset, upsetting Spider-Man, Pennywise, who I thought out of all of these nominees would have been the clear favorite other than Danny Elfman. Wow, what a shocker and a turn of events here. Wow. I, congratulations to the Armitage family. Well earned for being shitty human beings. Thanks again to Zach and Cody for featuring me in this lovely award show. Like I said, if you're interested, go head on over to Men Vs. Movies and check us out. We got a bunch of cool stuff over there. Back to you guys. The Armitage family from Get Out. Look, if nothing else from Get Out got nominated in this award show, look, the Armitage family is something that definitely deserves it. And the reason why, I would have had Pennywise above them, but I could not be happier. Because the Armitage family represent and embody villains that I love the most. Because although they are sick and twisted individuals, they represent a villain that you can sympathize with. Because at the end of the day, they just want to be better than the who they are. They want to be the best versions of themselves. 
themselves. And for the most part, I think that's something that we can all agree with. Griffin, thank you so much for presenting this award. It means an awful lot that you were willing to join in on this conversation with us. Oh yeah, and I, I am so sorry that Danny Elfman did not get nominated, but Zach, what do you have to say about this win? Fuck you, Danny Elfman, for fucking up the score, and Warner Brothers for fucking up Justice League in the DCU. Fuck. But yeah, best villain Armitage's win, and I mean the Armitage family... I, they were my main choice. I didn't even think to nominate them for when I was doing my own nominations. But the second I saw that they got nominated, I was like, they deserve it. Armitage family is one of the most... I mean, you understand what they want and what they are doing. And you understand their side. Even though it's a completely screwed up side... They were fantastic villains, all portrayed greatly. They all deserve it, and it, Get Out, it, Get Out deserves a lot more awards. But I'm so happy it won Best Villain. I mean, you look at the Colonel. The Colonel was great. Vulture was a very surprising MCU villain, and of course Pennywise. Can't forget about Pennywise. Like, come on, come on, guys. And of course we had our good guy Kylo Ren. Yeah, he was cool. I swallow Ren, I guess that's what some people like to call him. But yeah, Griffin, thank you so much for joining us. Now we come back to Breakthrough Actor. That is going to be our next category. And of course, we did Breakthrough Actress in the last one. But we got to talk about the guys as well. And let me tell you guys, we got a fantastic person, a fantastic YouTuber, in fact, that is going to be presenting this award. And he might already be here. So, Cody, get it out. Thank you, Cody and Zach, for giving me this opportunity. So, the nominations are... <laughs> Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name. Dakri Montgomery for The Power Rangers. Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out. Kumal Nanjiani for The Big Sick. And Bill Skarsgård for It. And... The winner is Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name. Thank you, everybody, for allowing me to be in this award show, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for presenting that, Cody. I mean, Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name. Ah, uh, that film is incredible. Call Me By Your Name is one of the best films of last year. If I would have seen it last year, it would have easily made it into my top five of last year. Timothy Chalamet gives one of the best performances. And for me, going to the Oscars, he's going to be my main contender to win. I think he deserves it. The kid is 22 years old and already putting out great performances. This guy is the next Leonardo DiCaprio. Here are my words. But I mean, looking at the rest of this list, Dakri Montgomery making it in there made me really happy. The guy's had a great year as well. Kumal, I've always loved him in Silicon Valley, but him in the Big Six was great. Bill Skarsgård really struck everyone and like made us so surprised by how good he was in Pennywise because the guy is iconic now. And of course, I can't forget to talk about Daniel Kaluuya and Get Out. The guy's always been circling small roles, but then he got this leading role in Get Out, and he, he's fantastic in the role. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Timothy Chalamet and the, the breakthrough actor category. Well, what I can say about that is, although I have not seen Call Me By Your Name, and I can't exactly speak about Timothy Chalamet, everybody's comments are just persuading me on the fact that eventually, one, I need to see Call Me By Your Name, and two, the fact that this entire year we had some really great strong performances. Me personally, I was rooting for Bill Skarsgård for it because what he does as Pennywise is just phenomenal. But I could not be happier and it just gives me a film that I need to see later on down the road. All right, and next up with every great female lead, there is a male counterpart by her side. So we need to talk about the best supporting actors of 2017. So now... I'll pass it over to our buddies over at the BS Review. Guys, take it away. And the nominations for Best Supporting Actor are Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Patrick Stewart in Logan, Will Poulter in Detroit, Harrison Ford in Blade Runner 2049, and Mark Hamill in Star Wars The Last Jedi. And the winner goes to... Sam Rockwell and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Right. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations to Sam Rockwell. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri was a powerful film that talked about loss in a, a, in a very, very particular and clever way. And Sam Rockwell might just very be 
the biggest character study of this entire year because the film goes in directions that people might not expect and it might irritate them because of how gutsy it is. And Sam Rockwell is at the front and center. He did a great job and I'm wondering if people are gonna mention the fact that on the nominations list we have two characters, we have two actors from Star Wars and one actor from Star Trek. But seriously, to Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Patrick Stewart, everybody else that was nominated, congratulations to you for being nominated. You all gave fantastic performances in your role. Me personally, I was rooting for Patrick Stewart, but I am so pleased that Sam Rockwell got this win. So just like the Oscars, we also snubbed Call Me By Your Name for a bunch of awards. So yeah, Best Sporting Actor is very very heavily in there. I mean, Richard Jenkins didn't even get in there for The Shape of Water. All the Call Me By Your Name stars didn't get in there either. But, I mean, seriously, going from it, Sam Rockwell, he was fantastic. I he I didn't even notice it was him when I saw the film. I He was totally into the role, and that's great. I personally, I like Q. Cody, was also going for Patrick Stewart. Shocked that he didn't win. I, I was really shocked that he didn't win. But, I mean, everyone in here did a fantastic job, and I, I'm really happy with the results on this one. Now, guys, we move to probably one of my favorite categories because everyone nominated in this category is mind-blowing amazing, and that is Best Actress. And we have one of the best ladies on YouTube, Rachel Wagner, presenting this one. So, Rachel, take it away. Hi, everybody. I am so honored to have been asked to participate in the Sweet Film Awards and to be asked to present the winner for Best Actress. This is very exciting. I think that 2017 was a very good year for women in film. We even got a Wonder Woman <laughs> in film, so it's very exciting. So let's talk about the nominees. For Best Actress in a Feature Film, we have Frances McDormand for The Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. We have Margot Robbie for I, Tanya. Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water, Circe Ronan for Lady Bird, and Jennifer Lawrence for Mother. And do, 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 this is very, very exciting. The winner is Frances McDormand for Three Billboards. Yay! So hopefully most people are happy about that. And uh, she's certainly one of our biggest talents that we have working today. So congratulations, Frances. I hope you enjoy uh, having gotten this award. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, back to you guys for the rest of the awards. Bye. Thank you so much, Rachel, for presenting that. And man, damn it. I really wanted Margot Robbie to win. Just saying, like, I loved her in Itania. I honestly think she gave the best performance of this year. And then it probably would have, if she didn't win, I'd like Sally Hawkins too. But I mean, I can't complain. Frances McDormand in Three Billboards is outstanding. Like, she gives probably the best performance of her career this. And I mean, I think this is the most stacked category in any award show going on this year because everyone in here did a great job. I was really happy to see Jennifer Lawrence get in there for Mother because I think she was very underappreciated in Mother because a lot of people shit on that film. And even though I enjoyed Mother, I get why people don't like it, but I think her performance was really well done and deserved the nomination. But seriously, congrats to Frances McDormand. I'm sorry, Margot Robbie, my girl, maybe another year. Yeah, hopefully it will be another year because Zach, I'm right there with you. If it wasn't going to be Margot Robbie, it should have been Sally Hawkins because what these two actresses did was give some of the best and defining performances of the year. But again, like Zach, I'm not complaining. I liked three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, and one of the biggest reasons is because of what Frances McDormand brought. It, it's a story about a grieving mother trying to figure out what happened to her daughter and trying to find the person who was responsible. It's a powerful movie, and Frances McDormand, congratulations across the board. And Rachel, thank you so much for presenting this award. Frances McDormand, you're a great actress. You are an iconic actress. Congratulations. But Zach, you know what? It's time for us to present the best picture of 2017. What do you say? Man, I can't say it enough. And of course, for best picture, we selected a very well-known YouTuber. And I mean, come on. It's Sean Chandler. He's the one that's going to have to be presenting best picture. And Sean, take it away. <laughs> My name is Sean Chandler, and we're ready to pick the best picture of 2017. If you stop and think about it, hundreds of movies are released every single year. Last year, I went to go see 107 different movies in the theater. If you do the math on that, that means I spent 
over a week in movie theaters last year. And with all the movies we've seen and we've voted on, we've narrowed it down to eight finalists, eight nominees for Best Picture of 2018. Here are your nominees. Baby Driver. The Big Sick. Blade Runner 2049. The Disaster Artist. Get Out. Logan. War for the Planet of the Apes. And Wonder Woman. So those are the nominees. And our winner is... Blade Runner 2049. It is our selection for the best picture of 2017. Wow, Blade Runner 2049 is the, the official winner of the best picture for the Sweet Film Awards. The first ever Sweet Film Awards giving out best picture and it deserves it. Blade Runner was one of the best films of the last year and it is an incredible snub. I honestly think out of anything for best picture in the Oscars, I think this is the film that should have been nominated over like one or two of the other films, but I I'm so happy. And thank you so much, Sean, for presenting that. It, it means a lot to me and Cody that you joined us. But really going off this list, I mean, you had Blade Runner, Disaster Artist, Logan, Get Out, Baby Driver, and so many other great films. And the fact that Blade Runner came out on top is a great thing. And we another big thing we have to give to is all to you guys, all the viewers. You guys all voted on the Best Picture winner. And I mean, Blade Runner came out on top. So I guess a lot of you guys must love Blade Runner. Zach's absolutely right. You guys helped us pick the best picture for the first annual Sweet Film Awards, so it makes it that much more special. In Blade Runner 2049, you guys know where I stand on it. I have said it in this very award show that it is my favorite film of the year. In Blade Runner 2049, it's a film that has stuck with people. That is apparent. It is the winner of the best picture award. And Blade Runner 2049 is one of those films where you can go back and analyze it and think about it and get new stuff from it every time you go back. It's a long film for sure at almost three hours long. But the fact of the matter is Blade Runner 2049, in this person's opinion, is one of the best films to come out in recent memory. It's a great science fiction film and it has won the best picture award for the first annual Sweet Film Awards. And you know what, guys? This, that's it. The Sweet Film Awards. We've wrapped up. We've done all the awards. But we have to leave you guys with a thank you. Thank you for coming on board and watching this. Thank you for all of your support throughout this entire process. You guys know that Zach and I have been doing this and getting this prepared to present for quite some time now. We got a brunch of our... YouTuber buddies on the community and reached out to get people that we didn't know of but we thought would like to join in and this was a truly great experience and for those of you who stopped by to watch the award show thank you so much and if you want us to do this again let us know share it get it out there leave comments leave likes tell us what this show means to you because Zach and I although this was a stressful process we would love to do this again Woo! We're done! We're done, we're done, we're done. Yes, I already took off my shirt pretty much, but I'm... Guys, thank you so much. Th this was a dream come true to present our own Sweet Film Awards. Of course, it took inspirations from other types of award shows, but it's all because of you guys. Th this was a ton of fun. Everyone who participated did a fantastic job. Everyone who voted and gave in their nominations also did a fantastic job. And I mean... The big thank you is to all you guys. Everyone who's watching this, you guys are all the best. You guys are all amazing. You guys are all classy. And in general, if I could, I would give you guys all a sweet film awards yourself. I, I love each and every one of you. I think the most important thing to leave here is to make sure to go subscribe and check out every other YouTuber that helped participate in this. All their links will be down below from part one and part two. Also, of course, big shout out to also Miss Movies, Brianne Chandler, for also joining us in part one. That was a big surprise that we would love to be able to to get her onto this show and it, it's a really big blessing to even be doing this whole youtube thing you guys are seriously all the best and cody you got any final words well zach my last words to to everybody who's watching is just once again reiterating the words i had before thank you guys so much for showing up because this show would not have been possible without your full support, without your love, without you being excited and, and kind of jacked up about what we were doing here. Labor of love, everything aside, we were so happy and proud to bring this to you guys. And we are more than happy to keep this show going years down the road. We're happy to bring it to you next year and see where it goes from there. But just so you guys know, 
Although this is the end of the Sweet Film Awards, this is not the end of the projects that Zach and I have coming towards your way. Sweet Film Awards are done. But you guys know we have the Battle of the Schmoes podcast. We also have a very special podcast headed your way coming next week. It's called the Sweet Film Podcast. And we'll tell you more about it when the time comes. But guys, get jumped up. Get excited because we have big plans headed your way. And I believe Zach has one more big announcement to tell you guys about. Yes, guys, before we get going, I got one big announcement for you guys. And that is, we got tons of cool game shows going around the YouTube inner space. We have the Movie Trivia Schmodown. We have Masters of Movie Trivia over on Sean Chandler's channel. And we also have Movie Fights over on Screen Junkies. And we also have the brilliant Rotten or Fresh from Ryan Tool. But me and Cody have been talking about this. And I, I threw this perspective to him. And me and him have bounced some ideas off. And we finally come up with some rules to an awesome game show called Entertainment Wars, baby. Get pumped, get hyped, more info coming soon. We're planning, we're still scheduling a release date, but you guys will be knowing that soon and knowing who the competitors are soon. So make sure to check us out, Entertainment Wars 2018. Get hyped, of course, for that and our podcast. Tons of great things coming. But you guys, seriously, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Cody's heart. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Also, go share this to any Facebook movie page. Go share this to your mom, your school, your friends your grandma whatever tell them how adorable we are tell them how generous and good looking we are and tell them how damn good this award show is and if you don't like the oscars then come back here and enjoy this great show again because that is when i said in the beginning that this is the greatest show i meant it you guys are all the best and of course you know what i'm gonna say next stay classy and have a great rest of your day